This is Actualize Freedom. Straight talk on growing clicks and conversions on Amazon FBA from people doing it every day. Now here's your host, digital marketing acrobat, Danny Kenji Carlson. What's up, guys? This episode is with John Tilly. He is the CEO of Zonguru, which is a pretty large software company for Amazon sellers, specifically around keywords. And uh, they have a lot of different tools, but I think their biggest strength really is having real Amazon data with the keyword tools. So that's really interesting, and we're gonna talk about that. This episode is mostly about data. So using both real Amazon data and algorithmic data on top of the real data to craft data that's actually useful for growing an Amazon business, for finding good products to research, for optimizing your Amazon listings for the right keywords and everything like that. So if you wanna nerd out on the data of how to really optimize what you're doing on Amazon, based on real data and real results instead of just guessing, then this episode is going to be for you. John has also been on Amazon since 2014 selling his own products. So this is not just one of those guys who just has figured out some stuff and is just regurgitating stuff. He's doing this based on his own real experience. So I'm at Bali, he is over there in LA and I'm really excited for this one. Let's just dive right into it. So the first one here, you have a really interesting perspective being on Amazon since 2014 how has the Amazon industry changed and how have sellers evolved and become more sophisticated over the years? Because things have just exponentially gotten more advanced and complicated, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, thanks. Thanks for having me, Danny. It's uh, I'm excited to, to, to chat and share this with, with your audience. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's funny. Cause I was, I was, you know, thinking about this podcast and, and just kind of sitting back and, and reflecting on, on, uh, you know, the last four or five years and, um, this is such a fast moving industry with, with, with so many changes happening all the time that sometimes you just sit back and you actually reflect on how far it's come. It's, it's, it's pretty fascinating and scary to see. Um, I actually was, was looking the other day and I took a, a screenshot of, of an Amazon search, uh, back in, uh, I think it was like 2015, you know, and, and it's mind blowing to see how far just the search results page has come in, in such a short time, you know? Back then it was like 16 listings, you know, no competitors, bad images, bad, uh, you know, bad copy. Um, and, and, you know, you could, you could come on a commodity product and you could probably launch and find your way and, and have a successful product. And, you know, moving into the end of 2019, where we are now, you know, you have just a sophisticated industry. This industry has been around for a while. It's super moving. So it's super fast moving and, and, Amazon's platform is growing. You've got, you know, 65 or more listings on one page. You have, you know, much stronger paid search driven strategies and placements that are happening on the page. Um, you know, a sophisticated algorithm in terms of how you grow and how you convert and how you make money for Amazon and how you recognize for that. And then on the flip side, you have these sophisticated sellers, you know, global sellers that are selling on amazon.com all competing for those 300 million people. Um, you know, big Chinese contingents, uh, you know, massive global, you know, effect on, on the Amazon.com business um, and just, you know, uh, sophisticated um, scaling um, businesses, you know, using sophisticated software, images, copy, everything is much more competitive. So, um, you know, thinking about how you compete today versus back in 2015, it's just, it's just a different ball game, you know? So it's just really interesting to reflect, reflect on how it's, how it's growing. You know, this is the biggest wave of the, you know, globally that, that we're on right now. Yeah. And would you say that it is much more difficult to start here? I mean, you hear people every single year since I got into Amazon, which was uh, 2016, people are saying uh, it's like way too hard now. Um, it's too competitive and all these kind of things. Um, and do how true do you think it is that it is just becoming way, way more competitive? And two, like, what would you say to those people who, who are thinking that it has now become too competitive and you shouldn't start? Yeah. You know what? It's like exactly that, you know, back in 2015, when I started, everyone's like, Oh, holy, you know, whatever it's it, Amazon's, I don't know if I can swear on the podcast, but you know, um, you know, you know, wow, it's so competitive. You can't even compete now, but, um, you know, people are saying that today and there's absolutely, you know, it is more competitive. You have to be smarter in terms of your strategies, but at the end of the day, um, you know, you have a bigger audience. Um, your chance of success is much uh, greater 
uh, if you get your right your strategies right you know so you just have to understand how to approach Amazon and and do it in a way that's aligned with with 2020 which we, we're going into versus how it was in, in you know a few years ago so the the opportunity is there I mean I, we have customers coming in every single day and just to see the scale of their business launched you know, a few months ago and doing 40, 50, 60, 100K a month, you know, if they get it right, um, it, it's there, you know. So um, you have to approach it in the right way um, and, and you know, just just uh, be smart about how you launch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you're also someone, this is going to be maybe the most interesting thing that I'm going to ask you here is you have insights into a lot of very unique data right? You have a software company and you've also been selling on Amazon for quite a while. So, you know, what is some of the unique data that you have access to and how are you using that to get a competitive edge on Amazon for you and you know, the people who use your softwares? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. And I think we, we should get into that, but one, one piece I want to add on into terms of laying the land for, for a second, just, just going back to launching on Amazon in 2020, I think, one thing that we're seeing is is we're seeing commodity products on Amazon becoming harder and harder to launch and comp compete against, right? So if you're launching kitchen utensils, it's it's a it's more of a commodity thing. People are, uh, it's very competitive, but there's also massive brands, big box brands that are now getting on onto the Amazon platform. So, you know, if you're looking to launch a kitchen utensil, you're competing against big brands who have massive budgets around. Um, you know, around paid search, you know, I, I just hear of brands right now saying, Hey, I want to spend 50,000 a month just on paid media to, to block out all the other competitors and own that space. So, you know, I would say the shift has changed a bit in, in terms of commodity products are, are probably the, the place where you don't want to compete from a private label perspective, but um, that whole concept of a niche within a niche, um, and finding those niche opportunities, those blue ocean opportunities on Amazon, you know, where they are less competitive, there's a kind of medium demand, medium competition. And if you can really find those nuggets and then come up with the creative product to serve those markets, you can absolutely blow up, you know. And, and I think that's the concept to get across is that when you are launching or, or building or, scale, or, or looking for products to launch on Amazon, using data to find those niches um, you know, those, those much smaller pieces of the pie, but actually um, there's so much demand that it's just there because it's 300 million people that, that that's the strategy to, to launching and being successful on Amazon. Um, and if you can get the right data um, to help you assess those opportunities, and, and when I say those opportunities, again, it's the niche within the niche, it's the blue ocean, it's the kind of mid-demand, mid mid-competition levels. If you can find, if you can use data to find those opportunities, assess that, validate that, and then, um, you know, use your creativity to come up with ways to differentiate that product so it stands out and connects with customers. And then, again, using data to make sure that you optimize that listing using long tail keywords and, and potentially keywords that other competitors aren't actually um, indexing for, you have an amazing shot at, at, uh, at, at having a great product. And, and Amazon's always going to give you a shot, right, because they want the best quality, the most creative products in those categories. And so if you are optimized, you're creative, and, and you, you, you beat your competition by targeting certain keywords, you're going to get that shot to get to page one. And then if you just manage your business, you can stay there. So, you know, that's, I know that's a, that's a big piece to, to unpack, but that's the general strategy of, of how you need to compete today versus, you know, a few years ago. You have to use data to find those opportunities. Um, and we obviously have unique data to, and we can dive into that to what, what we actually use to get there. Yeah, I love what you're saying about bringing a unique product to a niche market, right? And um, I actually just interviewed um, the founder of PicFu, which is a really interesting software where you can, before you're even launching a product, you could get some feedback from customers on which version they prefer, right? So if you're trying to bring a unique product to the market, maybe you would get um, you know, a 3D artist or something to create five different renderings of the product and see which version that people would actually prefer, right? And then you can use that data, which is like real data to actually go and uh, then you would pay the manufacturer to go create that unique product, right? What do you, what do you think about strategies like that? And do you have any similar strategies for bringing unique products to market? Yeah, I think, I think Pitfu is a, a great product and, and it aligns with, 
you know, I almost take that a step further and saying differentiation, it's almost like the more information you get in, the better your creativity and your, and your solution is coming out, right? So you've got to get good data coming in. And PickFu is a great example of how you can get different renderings or product ideas in front of your avatar. And, and the key is your avatar. And when I say avatar, it's who your target audience is. You have to really understand who is the person who wants to buy your product. What do they love? What do they hate? What are their needs? What are their wants? Um, and, and really fundamentally understand how this product can connect with that individual. And if you can really understand that, your solution in terms of what your product looks like, you know, um, differentiation you do functionally to your product, your packaging, your brand, or your listing, everything, all of that can be created to connect and, and, and really have that aha moment with your customer where they're like, okay, great, this is an awesome product, I'm gonna buy it. Um, and you have to get that good information. So PickThrough is a great one. We actually have a really cool tool. Um, <laughs> it's actually called uh, Love Hate. It's the Love Hate tool. And what that does is, is one of the good ways to get in, or one of the great ways to get information on what people love and hate about a product is actually to scan and read reviews, right? You've got to find your competitors' products, read all the reviews, understand what are the five stars, what stands out from the products, what do they love, or what are the negative reviews, and, and what um, you know, what they hate about it. And and that traditionally was a process that we used to use virtual assistants to do, to go through and scan all these reviews and, and present to you, hey, these are the things, these are the ideas you should do to differentiate your product. And we've created a tool that actually, um, you know, you can type in any phrase, for example, yoga mats, this is my yoga mat, I, I usually use that just as an example, but yoga mats, and it, it will go ahead and scan all of the reviews for that product phrase and then word cloud them into, um, you know, what people love, the phrase that people love about their product and what they hate about it. So you can quickly just kind of look at that and say, okay, you know, people love thick, non-slip, you know, you know, extra long, whatever those things are uh, about a yoga mat. And these are the things that they hate about it. And so it, it quickly, in a matter of seconds, will give you the information to understand, okay, this is how I can actually differentiate, differentiate my products. Well, that's interesting. Let me dive in and read the reviews and you can actually just click in and actually read some of those reviews. So it's a, it's a really quick way. So that coupled with something like pick food just gives you so much information that you can now take and, and actually um, implement on your products. That's very interesting. Um, and maybe now let's talk about um, what are some of, what are some of the ways that you are identifying these niche categories to get into? Are you using different product research or software tools to help identify these niches that are that are not commodities yeah absolutely i think um again you know it's it's about using data to dive deep you know to look for those blue ocean um categories and we have a couple of tools that we use in in the research uh, space one is called keywords on fire we call it keywords on fire because um you know it's, it's a data-driven approach based around keyword research right and so what the tool does just at, at a high level is you can put in a product, if, we do, if we're using it for research, you can use it for listing optimization as well, but let's just focus on research for a second. You can put in any product phrase, like a, you know, kind of a niche, uh, you can put that in. And what it will do is it will um, reverse look up over 50 ASINs, the top 50 ASINs, you know, all of the keywords that are based around that. Plus it will bring in some data from Amazon, from the API connections we have. We're, we're a verified partner of Amazon, so we get access to, to data that other companies don't, we'll pull those together, de them, and them, and then showcase that in a way that you will have these relevant keywords, lists of relevant keywords um, that you can use for, again, listing optimization. But the trick here is then to filter that data and look for those, those mid-volume, mid-competitive -com keywords and keyword idea and phrases that will, that will bounce out. So for example, um, you, know, you can actually go in and you can filter by the, the actual search volume. So it'll give you exact search volume. Say it's like, okay, this is 20,000 20, searches a month, you know, or 50,000 or 100,000 or down to 1,000 or 500 searches a month. So you can filter by search volume and you can also filter by number of reviews to, to look at less competitive categories. You can filter by dollars from keywords. So we give you the, the actual potential dollars from keywords that are earned by each of those, those keywords. And when you go out, and there's a number of other filters for like, top 25 competitors for the top three competitors. Um, and when you actually go in and you use these filters, you can find, you know, for example, uh, uh, say, let's say 
And so some keywords that have 2,000 search volumes a month, over $10,000 in keyword revenue, and for example, under 200 reviews. And when you filter it down like that, you, you'll pop out with the, these phrases that will give you product ideas that you haven't even thought of. You know, it's so interesting to go in and see. So you can put in a phrase like gardening tools. And when you do that filter down, you'll start to see like herb garden, you know, planters come out and all these other creative, interesting ideas that are so, so don't have any com competition, but have these good search volumes and actually uh, good revenue as well. So that's a data centric approach that literally I can do it in two, three minutes and I'll have like four or five great ideas that are interesting that we can compete on page one that's a niche within a niche and then i have to apply that idea of differentiation over that so that's one of the tools that we have we, we have a niche radar which um will then validate product ideas on amazon using a niche score so we have a niche score which is a combination of demand competition uh we, we have um, profitability and uh, launch budget so we, we kind of look at your capital flow plus how much net margin you can potentially make and the demand and the competition, and then look at that for that product idea within that niche and say, hey, you know, a 65% score for this product in this niche is a good idea. So we, we have tools like that to really um, assess. Uh, not, it's, it's not a case of just going on Amazon anymore and just typing in something and going like, oh, this is a great idea. You've got to have data that tells you this is a cool idea, but this is cool because it meets these data criteria. Uh, criteria. And, and then taking that onto Amazon, running a niche score and seeing how that sits within that page one, within that category. And then you can start to make decisions from there. So these are the kind of tools we have around, um, you know, around, around the research side of it anyway. Yeah. yeah, and you're someone who obviously has their head in the data all the time. Um, I'm interested to hear what you think are um, the one or two uh, data points that most Amazon sellers aren't really paying enough attention to that they should be paying attention to you. Does any come to mind? Yeah, absolutely. I think search volume is, is, is the number one. And I think historically within the software space, no one, you know, it's an estimate. People are estimating how much the search volume is. Um, and, you know, we have access to, to, to exact search volume from, from Amazon. Um, and, and then I think that and a combination of dollars from keywords, so you can really understand those three things. So it's like search volume, dollars from keywords, and review counts, you know, and how that sits for the different products that you're looking at. Um, that will quickly tell you, can I compete? Will, can I compete, you know, in terms of being the competition? Is there enough demand so I'm going to make some money? And what kind of money can I make from this? Those are three things you have to, at a, at a high level understand before you move forward with the, with the product. Um, and, and that cannot compete is also really interesting because the kind of keywords that are returned, you can say, okay, I can't compete on this keyword, but I can on these, you know? So um, I would say those are, are fundamental, um, strong uh, points that you need to look at. And then there's conversion rates and, and, and those kind of things, I think, which, which are important as well to assess as you go, yeah. Yeah, so you guys are um, a partner with Amazon, right? So they do give you a lot of real data. Are those data points that you just mentioned, are those actual real data points or are they, are they um, algorithms? Uh, there are some real, there's some real data points in that in terms of like search volume. Um, and then there's algorithms that we put in on that to estimate, right? And so, um, again, I think where Amazon, where software was four years ago to where it is now, it's a completely sophisticated uh, piece of software. I mean, the complexity of what we do with our software these days, um, just based on obviously learning and growing every single year, but also to compete with with the software that's out there in the space, it's you know it's it's data science, it's algorithms, um, and and it's ensuring that um, we are the most accurate we can be to so that people can make the right decisions for their business. And I think. That's something that as a software company, you really have to acknowledge and take um, responsibility for um, in that when we started this business, myself and Adam Hudson, who's, you know, he, he runs Reliable Education um, and uh, he's, he's my business partner. We've known each other for many years and, and he's focused on the, the education side. But when we started this software together, the, the, the challenge that we wanted to solve is can we provide, can we get access to data that's the most accurate, uh, the most timely and the most relevant 
um, and, and, and position it and, and showcase it in a way that we can make the right decisions for our business. So it's got to have that business lens um, to ensure that the data that we're seeing is showcased in a way that I can quickly assess it and make a decision for my business. And I think that's a big piece that's missing from a lot of software is, you know, it's so easy to go in there as a developer, well, not easy, but developers can, can get data and they can present it. But if you can, you can, you can um, interpret that data and, and ensure that you're presenting in a way that you fundamentally understand what people need to do for their business and you take responsibility in saying, hey, we're going to give you accurate, timely, um, relevant data in a right way so you can make correct decisions for your business, um, you know, that, that, is, that is critical. And so we take a lot of pride in that and, and, and care in that in, 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 re in recognizing that how people see our data, um, the decision they make is, is based on our data. So it's got to be accurate and, it, and it's got to be, um, you know, timely and relevant. So any um, algorithmic data that we put in front of our customers, we test on a daily basis against real data and it's a, it's a self-learning mechanism. So it's completely, completely accurate within a few percentages to give the right guideline to, to customers. Yeah, and let's talk a bit about that data point you mentioned, dollars from keywords. Can you explain a little bit more what that is and why it's important? Yeah, I think, you know, any keyword that, that you, it's all about, to a degree, it's all about page one, right? You've got to be able to com compete on page one for your niche within a niche. So that's why I say com commodity goods are probably not what you should be focusing on, but a niche within a niche, um, the dollars from keywords that we return is the average revenue, dollar revenue earned for the, uh, across the top 25 competitors for that keyword. So we have algorithms that actually look at, hey, for that search, uh, based on the competitors that are returned from that specific uh, keyword search and data that we're getting from Amazon, we get a lot of like interesting data from, from the API. We can determine the average revenue that those tw top 25 listings for that keyword actually earn. So for example, if, if I'm typing in, you know, gardening, uh, gardening pot plots and, and you know, the, the revenue that's been returned is say $35,000 across the top 25. That's one data point and an interesting story to compare against perhaps uh, a gardening tool belt that's returning $255,000 across the top 25 um, competitors for that keyword. Right? So, you know, that coupled with, we also give you the, the, the dollars from keywords for the top three competitors. So say it's 255,000, we might actually give you another 50, maybe 50,000 is being split between the top competitors. So you can look at that and say, gardening tool belt might be a better option right now because my potential for all of that revenue is much higher. The competition is say the same as, as the pot plants. So, you know, I, I'm, I can still get in on that competition. Um, and the, the distribution across those top 25 is not really top heavy. So it's not like the top three are getting all of that. So I can definitely potentially compete and get onto that page, beat them on reviews, um, and, 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 you know, kind of hit, hit our goals. So that revenue number is really important, but again, it's not a number to be assessed just on its own. You need to look at the, 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 the dollars from keywords. You need to look at the search volume, um, and you need to look at the, the level of competition, um, and we have a listing score as well, so you can really like look at all listings and you know EBC and scoring out of ten, etc. So there's a bunch there, um, and yeah, just looking at that keywords on fire tool and, and the columns that we have, it's there's so much sophistication there. But once you get it and you actually use the filters, you're literally getting ideas in a couple of seconds, which is which is awesome. This podcast is brought to you by Kenji ROI, a complete done-for-you service for your Amazon listing creation and optimization. Everything from product photography, including lifestyle images with a real model, graphic design images and studio images, to the copywriting and keyword optimization, to videos, and enhanced brand content if you're lucky enough to have brand registry. We also manage marketing when it comes to Amazon ads. And also, for some bigger sellers out there who might be interested in building a messenger list, we offer services creating the many chat funnels to follow up with customers for more reviews, to help build your own audience so you can launch new products to help rank for new keywords. Um, and there is Facebook ad management built into that as well for the right sellers. So if you want to learn more about Kenji ROI, head to K-E-N-J-I-R-O-I.com. That is actually my middle name, Kenji, with the R-O-I added onto the end. Yeah, um, and certainly like adding adding algorithms on top of real data is can give you a lot of 
um, refined data. Um, but for the real data nerds out there, what are the actual real Amazon data points that you're able to get through the API? Uh, I mean, I'd have to dive in and, and, and give you a, a full list of that, but it's, it's search volume. It's, um, you know, it's, it's conversion metrics. It's, um, uh, metrics around a specific listings, session percentages. Um, there's probably in our niche score, we probably have well over 20 to 25, even up to over 35. And I'm, I'm kind of giving you a guess here cause I'm, I'm not the CTO, but, um, we have about that many data points that come in that are then actually produced into, um, you know, the, those, those kind of niche scores, which is demand competition search volume, et cetera. So, um, you know, there's, there's a bunch that goes into it. It's quite difficult to just say, Hey, this is one point, but, um, yeah, I hope that kind of answers the question or if there's a specific data point that you're interested in, in discussing, we can jump in on that. Yeah. Maybe now let's jump into listing optimization. So what do you, what do you think is the most important when it comes to using some of this data to optimize the listings? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And I think you would probably agree with this um, in, in terms of strategy and approach. Um, the way to really rank with your listing optimization these days is to understand and split your keywords out into two major groups. One being your kind of like short tail, high volume, high, highly competitive keywords. So, you know, if I'm looking at a, a mug like this, it's like, or, or a cup like this, this red cup that I'm looking at right now, it's like water bottle, sorry, uh, water bottle, right? Like water bottle is a short tail keyword. On the flip side, there's long tail keywords, which are, you know, less demand, less volume, search volume, um, uh, longer tail, more specific keywords that convert in a much higher number. Um, so for example, red, aluminum, water bottle, you know, if someone's looking for that and my product matches, uh, the conversion is going to be high. So, so what I do from a strategic perspective is I, I will pull a list of keywords using keywords on fire for specific phrases that, that I've added. Um, and I will then use the filters to split them into those two groups, the high volume, short tail keywords, and then the mid volume, longer tail, less competitive keywords. And the idea being is that most competitors are all competing against those high volume keywords, um, which definitely drive the most traffic, but it's much harder to rank for those. So if you can actually find all of those um, longer tail keywords that potentially your competitors aren't ranking for, that you are more relevant for, you can um, put those into your listings, rank for those immediately, you know, maybe put a paid search campaign against it for those longer tail keywords. And it almost creates this halo effect where you all of a sudden start to convert for these less competitive um, mid volume long tail keywords that are relevant for your product. And the algorithm will start to see, hey, you're getting a good conversion percentage, and this halo effect will then just start push, start pushing up into your shorter tail, uh, high volume keywords, and you can really start to compete against those. So, I think from a listing optimization perspective, at a high level, it's fundamentally important to create those two groups, and then to use one to actually drive your 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 ranking on the on the high volume keywords. I don't know if you kind of agree with that strategy, but that's the way that, that we approach it. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of the time you can have the shorter tail keywords within the longer phrases anyways, right? You can kind of get two for one. You don't necessarily have to repeat water bottle and red aluminum water bottle because water bottles within red aluminum water bottle as a phrase, right? Um, yeah. And I'm curious to hear how you place these keywords around. Like, are you, are you really focusing the title and the, the most important areas of the listing with the shorter tail ones, or do you like to put the longer tail ones in there? What's your general optimization methodology is there? Yeah, I think, I think first you need to, you have to identify what are the, the phrases that you want to target, right? Because using the, the data driven approach, you might see that, you know, red camping water bottle, um, has got a high demand and search volume and less competition than red aluminum water bottle, right? Which might actually have similar demand, but, uh, you know, higher competition. So if I can look at keywords and actually at, a, at that kind of level, understand where is my biggest competitive opportunity with the right kind of demand, I can then decide, okay, this is the, I want to target all of those keywords, but this is fundamentally the, the one that I want to go after the most, right? And once I made that decision, the, the idea is that those should be higher up in your listing. 
there's a sense that that if your if your keyword, for example, red camping water bottle is in your title right up in the front, for any any searches that happen for that keyword, the exact search volume that, that the search for that keyword and then converts, the algorithm rewards you more accordingly. So the idea is to you know to to put your your targeted keywords and, and when I say targeted is not the highest demand and most competitive. It's good demand uh, with with good competitive opportunities. Put those up in your title, um, and then your 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 bullets, and then your description, and then your backing keywords. So um, that's kind of the approach that, that we follow when when we optimize. You agree with that, or you approach it slightly differently? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's not always you should not always be targeting the highest volume keywords because, like you said, in a lot of categories, that high volume broadest keyword one maybe is not actually relevant enough to your product. So if people type that in they might actually be looking for uh, a different type of water bottle you mentioned, right? Like that, that steel yeah. one you just showed me is if someone's looking for just a cheap little plastic one, they don't want to spend $30 on this, on this uh, steel fancy one. Right. Um, but you know, steel, red steel water bottle, very specific. Um, so I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and I think, I think your point there is, is relevancy. You know, relevancy is so important. You've got to, there's no point in just optimizing for keywords. Okay, great. You know, it has the right search volume and demand. It has to be relevant for your product because when, when Amazon gives you that shot and, and you get those keywords, if you can get your conversion percentage up, they're going to send you more traffic like that. So relevancy is, is critical, you know, and, and again, a lot of tools out there just give you a bunch of keywords that are not even relevant. So you've got to make sure you get the relevancy right. It's so important, especially like when you're going through things like ads, like if you're just sending a bunch of irrelevant traffic over there, maybe you get like really cheap clicks and, you know, really people sign up on your email list or something for really cheap. But if you're just running ads to India or something like that, then those people are never going to buy anything. They're not actually relevant to what you're trying to do. So relevancy is, is so, so key. Um, and I'm also curious to hear what your priority for placement is in the different in different places so like title bullet points description like where where is the hierarchy that you you place your top performing keywords yeah uh, and again i think it's it's that it's once you figure out that that the ones that you want to target that are relevant that are that are have that less competition get that higher up in your listing so you know your your most targeted ones even if they are long tail, but but if you're saying, hey, these are the ones that are giving me the best opportunity to 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 get in, get good demand, and be let and beat the competition, I'll put that up in my title, then my bullets, then my descriptions, then my backing keywords. Um, you know that that's that's the the priority order that I'd follow because the idea is that um, in your title, if if you convert exact match on that, Amazon's going to algorithm is going to reward you more than if that same keyword was in your backing keywords. You know, um, yeah. And actually, just talking about backing keywords for a second, it's, we have a brand new tool that's actually just come out, and I think we're the first in space. It's called Keyword Spotlight, and what that does is it allows you to see your your own or your competitors' backing keywords. So this is another, you know, through our API um, data access, we can we can actually showcase backing keywords. So you know, you can put in your top three competitors into Keyword Spotlight, and you can actually see what keywords are they putting in their backend, and it's really interesting to see. Uh, what people are putting in their backing keywords, um, you know, uh, just, just just some some interesting things going on there. So, if you're if you're looking at the biggest competitors, and you're like, I read all their listings, but what are they doing differently? It's always interesting to know what's in the backing keywords. Yeah, yeah, uh, certainly. Um, and I'm curious also to hear your opinion on the other parts of the Amazon listing. Obviously, using all this data and tools, it mostly applies to the actual keywords and the the text copy in the listing, right? But that's only a part of the listing. So the product photography and the A plus content, for example, uh, what are what are the strategies that you think are really important for just rounding out the listing with the other parts? Yeah, I think I think it's always important to to it's a, it's a really solid point, and I think it's it's super important to 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 state that data is fifty percent of the game. The other fifty percent is how you can use your communication and your visual appeal, um, your brand, your images, your, your, your image overlays, um, and, and obviously your reviews page that as well to convert your customer. So it, yes, writing your copy and making sure that you have the right keywords in place for, the Amazon, for Amazon's algorithm is, is, is a really important piece. But understanding that customers 
go to the search results page, they are clicking on your listing be, be, because of maybe a little bit of wording in your title, but mainly because of your main image, right? They're clicking on it. And then to get them to convert is mainly based on all of your images that are showcasing there, what benefit overlays you put on there, your review counts, um, and then maybe potentially your EBC. Reading the actual copy is the last thing they're doing. And, and if they, they, in a lot of cases, they're not. So it is 100% so critical to make sure you have beautiful images shot in ways that are way better than anything else on Amazon. So going off of Amazon, looking at big brands and saying, hey, mine can compete with this, how can I shoot it? Invest in those images. Um, in, you know, Think about it again, thinking about your avatar and how you can connect with them and what are the things that they love and hate and using that as benefit overlays on your second, third and fourth and fifth images. Um, you know, Those are your, your, your big levers that are gonna move uh, the conversions, right? Um, you know, getting into the detail of the copy, yes, that's very important for the algorithm. It has to read well, but that's a smaller piece than, than, than those critical pieces. So that's definitely important. EBC is very important. Um, you know, creating that web page, that store page, these are, these are all really key things um, that you cannot forget. And, you know, I always say that if you, if you don't get your differentiation right, whether it's visual differentiation or functional differentiation, functional being the best, but you have to do both. But if you don't get that right, and do that well, um, you're in a losing battle from, from the get-go. You know, there's, there's, there's no real point in like trying to get outside traffic and this and that. You have to get the fundamentals right. And so that, that, that research at the beginning around who your avatar is, how do you connect with them, and how do I differentiate my product, that's what sets the, 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 you know, um, the professionals and the experts from those people who just want to be, want to be wannabe sellers. You've got to, you've got to nail it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm a little biased with a listing optimization agency, but if you are not focusing on creating a really well optimized listing and great photos and great copy and everything like that, then all of the advertising money you're putting in, all of the other external traffic, uh, marketing strategies you're doing, you're just basically knocking, you know, five to fifteen percent off the effectiveness of that. That's it's going to be huge, right? So if you want to throw um, a bunch of your ad spend in the toilet then you can you can not focus on listing optimization but it's just one of those levers that makes everything else you do perform better and so it just makes so much sense to really put the focus on that do you agree i 100 percent agree again that's that's that it's all about conversions right because you this is the soft the soft skill of amazon which people sometimes forget it's the business mind it's the it's the understanding it's a true entrepreneurial spirit right which is taking something and thinking about how to do it in a different way than the competitors through your differentiation, all that kind of stuff to get the click and the conversion, right? And if if Amazon is, you know, the Tinder for products, how do I visually and, and, and in the best way possible showcase my products so that customers who want that are clicking on it um, and, and, then, and then converting? And, and, and Amazon, if you keep this one thing in mind, which is Amazon is there to make money. If you can make great money for Amazon, they're going to keep sending you traffic and more traffic. And your biggest problem will be staying in stock on Amazon. You don't have to do anything else. Um, and so if you can understand how to make sure that when they, they're going to test my product because Amazon always wants the latest and greatest and best products. So no matter what you have, they're going to send some traffic to it. And if you can make sure that that's relevant and converts, they're going to send you way more. So, so, and, and that conversion piece comes into everything you're talking about right there. Awesome. Oh man, this has been an absolutely value packed interview. Um, it was just end off with, if you have any, any advice for a seller and they, they've been selling on Amazon for a little bit, but they, they don't really monitor that much data. They like, things are kind of working, but, they want to get a better handle on things. What do you recommend that they are monitoring? Which metrics or what kind of data should they monitor to improve their sales on Amazon? It's a really, really good question. And I think um, I was just talking about this, this the other day. And I think so often we see, you know, people do the, the they spend six months to a year perfecting and creating this amazing product that they launch on Amazon and they launch it and they're, they're doing incredibly well for the first, the honeymoon period, I call it, in the first few months, you know, maybe they run out of stock once and they get some stock back. Um, and, and then, you know, six months, eight months, nine months in, they've fundamentally got a few things wrong 
and they've started to fall out of favor with the algorithm. There's a little bit more competition coming. They haven't stayed on top of their business. And, you know, it slowly starts to deprecate. And all of a sudden, something that was doing 50,000 a month is now doing 10,000 a month, you know, and they're scratching their head and going, why did that happen? And whatever they do, they can't seem to get back to where they were. And I think the, the, from my experience and, and seeing, you know, for these sellers who've launched something, I think you have to, the most advice I can give there is to, to be consistent on, on staying on top of your, on top of your, your, your product. So building in processes where once a week, at least once a week, you probably launch, hopefully you're launching other products because that's the best way to scale and diversify your risk is to launch other products. As soon as you launch one, launch another. That's another story. But for the ones that you have launched, build in a process where at least once a week you are checking your listing, um, understanding that, that it's a moving landscape. Your competitors are changing, pricing is changing, um, keywords are changing, traffic is changing, and making sure that you're diagnosing, running diagnostics using tools to make sure that you are uh, one getting the right keywords in place, you're at, you, you're based at the right price, you have the right images in the right place, and you um, and Amazon has indexed you for those. Um, so I think running your listing optimization at least once a month and running through those things, getting the right keywords, using search term reports, you know, using the power of, of paid search to to funnel into your listings, that's a really key piece of listing optimization. The other one is is absolutely business management, looking at your, your net margins and making sure you're not, um, you know, overcapitalizing on your page search, um, but you're doing the right things to really grow that business. I think, I think the business management um, part is absolutely key. Ensuring your review rate is, is, is over that 5% that you, you're sticking to that, your health score is right. Um, you know, there's, there's five or six or seven different key things that you need to just make sure you constantly are, are keeping your, your pulse on that and, and just staying about because if you get a couple of things wrong and you fall out of favor with with the algorithm uh, it's difficult to come back awesome john well this has been super super valuable and if listeners want to reach out to you or learn more about what you do where's the best place for them to do so online uh zonguru.com so hit, hit up zong zonguru.com z-o-n-g-u-r-u.com um you know Come in there. Uh, you can email me at john, J-O-N, at zonguru.com if you want to hit me up personally. I'll be more than happy to, to answer your emails. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, the, the, the last thing there is, is we've just launched a, um, a web series, a four-part web series. Uh, you can see us on YouTube, Instagram, there's a whole bunch of places. But uh, the four-part web series is actually going through, the, it's going through that fundamental process of how do you choose the perfect product to launch in 2020. It's called 2010, 2020 Perfect Product Vision. Um, and you can get us at 2020.songu.com. Uh, um, and there's a full series there that you can watch and we'll go through all the tools and strategies to actually launch that product. So um, I'm sure I'll, I'll be able to give you a link for that as well. Um, I think that that is uh, one of the best places to get us. And, oh, and actually one other really cool place is Instagram. Songu, uh, you know, at Songu is our Instagram handle. Um, and what's interesting about that um, channel is that we've developed it in a way that is that is it's basically a feed in your Instagram of cool product differentiation ideas, um, you know, cool new product ideas, um, how to rate them. So it, if you, it's just a feed of great product ideas and inspiration. So it's not about showcasing our tools and that kind of stuff. It's more about if you're looking for new products and ideas to sell, go to that feed because daily you'll be able to be inspired by different ideas that we, we give you some learning tips about how to do them, how to do copy overlays, how to differentiate your product, all those kind of pieces around product research and product differentiation. So, um, you know, we, we find that that gives people a lot of value because it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's giving you good ideas to take into your business. Well, it's certainly better than all these model accounts and cat photos that I'm sure a lot of you guys are following right now. So, <laughs> yeah, if you guys want any of the links to anything John just mentioned, those will be in the show notes at actualizefreedom.com. And if you haven't already, please head over to whatever app you're listening to this podcast on and leave a review. I read every single one and I appreciate you guys, but um, I really don't appreciate when it's not a five star one. I get really mad and I get depressed and I start to cry. So if you want to make me cry, then make it not five stars but you know i love all you five star guys so thanks for listening guys and until next time guys take care yeah thanks for having me 
This podcast is sponsored by the Helium 10 suite of tools, and we at Kenji ROI have been using Helium 10 for more than three years now. They have so many tools packed into one, I don't think that there's a better value, um, and we use it all the time for ourselves and our clients, so we can actually recommend it from real experience. We use their keyword tracker to see how our product launches are doing, the keyword indexing tool to ensure that you're actually showing up for your main keywords. Super, super important step right there. And also Magnet and Cerebro, a really powerful combination for finding keywords your competitors are using or just finding new keywords to put into your listing in general. You should be using this on you know, at least a monthly basis to see if any new keywords are coming up um, because new searches are coming up all the time, guys. Like people are searching on Google um, I forget the number, but a huge percentage of those searches are brand new, never been done searches. So if you guys want a discount code, you can use 50 Kenji ROI for 50% off your first month of Helium 10 or 10 Kenji ROI for 10% off for life. So that's a pretty good discount. You might as well. Um, we use them and recommend them for years. So if you guys need that, you guys will definitely get good value out of Helium 10. For show notes and resources mentioned in this episode, visit KenjiROI.com.